Yes, we've got lucky, and we found who I'm guessing are a few members of the Paradise Pride. They are opposite, on the opposite side of the river to where we are. So sadly, we can't get close to them. There's the second one and the third one. Oh, and a fourth one at the base of the tree. Someone's just poked its head up. And we stopped in this area. There was a few zebra that were kind of getting quite worked up. I'm not sure if it was an intraspecies debate or if something had actually spooked them. And while we were scanning around with the old binoculars, we got to see these guys. This one that we're looking at now keeps looking back in that direction. Ah, check the ostriches in the background. <laughs> Um, and I'm not sure why she keeps looking there. I'm not sure if it's possible prey or who knows, maybe Scar, who's dominant over the lioness within this area. Very good. Now, if we just take a quick scan across to some zebra. They are moving slowly towards the lion. And who knows, if they tried to come down to the river and try and cross, and this is one of the zebra's favorite crossing points, the lions are going to definitely swoop in and try and make the most of this opportunity. So some good prospects for the lions. And while we wait for those prospects, there's one of my favorite birds that I actually haven't seen since we've been in the mire, just sitting on the water's edge. Some white-faced whistling ducks. Alongside them is what I think is a green shank, but I'm not 100% sure. It's also Kirsty who's directing the show's favorite bird, so hopefully I'm getting some brownie points by showing them to you. They've got a wonderful call that goes something like this. Maybe a bit more whistle and a little bit less air. Mine was quite an airy one there. But aren't they pretty? Maybe they're getting ready for a flight. They're all kind of waddled forward there. And it's usually when they fly that you get to hear them to call. Oh, please fly and call for us. It would be absolutely wonderful if you guys decide to do that. Come on. Maybe they're cautious of the old crocodilians lurking in the depths. Mm-hmm. Lots of big crocodiles lurk along this river. I'm feeling quite confident that we're going to get some good action out of the lions and the zebra. The lions are all still heads up. They don't look like they're too full-bellied. I mean, it's not easy to tell from here. But just by judging by how intent they're looking, I think we may get lucky. And this lady over here, I'm having faith in being the ringleader. The zebra, though, still have quite a long way to move before they get into an applicable spot for the lions. And judging by the way these zebra are acting, I've got a feeling they do want to cross over. There's quite a large herd of zebra. We can't see them from where we are, but on our side of the river. So these guys may be wanting to get across them. Hello to ask me, you'd like to know why do we get zebras in Africa but not wild horses? I'm actually not sure where wild horses really occur, but a zebra is a wild horse. It's an equine, so it's just painted differently to most regular horses. So it's 
It's yeah, it's part of the same family as most horses you'll get all around the world. This is just the African version. So I'm not sure which of our river cams are actually working at the moment. So I think two of them are. Um, I'm not sure if there's one basically slightly downstream of where we are and one slightly upstream of where we are positioned. But it could be that the two that are here aren't the ones that are actually functioning. We used to have four that were working, but they've been battered by the elements and by some animals that have run into them. And it's not, it's, I mean, the fact that the animals have run into them, it, we, we need to obviously be cautious that it's not our fault, but the cameras are certainly not positioned in the way. It's just the chaos and frenzy of the crossings cause animals to, you know, just run into bushes and banks, which they ordinarily wouldn't do. Interestingly, there's also some topi that are coming down on our left here and maybe they are going to be leading some zebra down to a crossing. That would be wonderful. There they are. So the large herd of zebra that we saw initially on our side of the river was just kind of behind the bushes to the right of these topi. And I'm very interested to see how much crossing occurs outside of the actual migration because I think we may have misread how it all works here. And a lot of the time we said that crocodiles don't feed for months. Well, they may not have the buffet of the migration to feed on for months on end, but there's certainly going to be toing and froing of Topi, Thompson's Gazelle, and Zebra across this river outside of the migration and there you can see a zebra is following them down so it looks like we may be in a promising situation to see a crossing i've yet to see a decent one with you guys filmed from a vehicle we've got lots of incredible stuff from the river cams but not so much from the vehicles Let's take a quick look at the lions. Manu, sorry, the ones on the termite mound. There's all of a sudden three there. Off to the left. Of, yeah, there we go. So it looks like quite a large pride of lion. There's three there. And definitely another two that I can see right now, but I think some others are just beyond the ridge where we can't see them. <laughs> so, now I need to think about where to position the vehicle so that we've got a good spot for these lions. And while I work out what to do and try and be in the best position for both the lions and a possible crossing, we are going to send you across to Tristan who has found some lions of his own.